Well, welcome back. We're here again. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about the CCS1 connector, um, which obviously I'm still now keeping in my car. Um, one of the things that I had some concerns about uh, with the micro USB was the idea that uh, there's a battery in here that needs to be kept charged. So what I did was I just went out and picked myself up a 12 volt cigarette lighter plug. with a USB connector on it. And what I do is I just, in, in the Model Y, it's very convenient because you've got a 12 volt plug right back there. And then I just keep my uh, micro USB connector in there and uh, I keep it plugged in periodically to make sure that the battery is charged. Um, also, uh, I interestingly enough had a phone call today from the folks at SeaTech in China. Uh, and uh, spent a couple of minutes talking to them about the, the adapter. Uh, one of the things that they mentioned, because uh, I talked about the Chatamo uh, not being as software dependent as, as the CCS1 seems to be, um, and their comment was that uh, apparently there's uh, the standards for CCS1 from different uh, charging stations is uh, not quite as consistent as you'll find with the uh, Chatamo adapter. Chatamo adapter is pretty much, they said constant anywhere you go, it's pretty much the same, um, same connection capabilities. Um, but with the CCS1, they have found that there's been uh, various formatting changes when you go from different charging companies. I can't uh, swear whether that's true or not, but that seems to be what they found, which is why uh, they're, uh, their feeling was that they needed to have a micro USB connector in there to make sure that uh, they could keep the firmware up to date um, as changes are made in the charging stations. So today what we're going to do is, is as was actually suggested in a comment on the channel, um, we're actually going to go out and uh, we're going to uh, do a comparison between the Chatamo charger and the, and the uh, CCS1 charger at a station to see what kind of output we get between the two. Now my car isn't really a uh, that low on battery right now, so I'm not convinced that uh, uh, we'll get a peak rate out of it. However, what we will find out is uh, I'll be able to compare it against the Chatamo to see if, that, if the charging is consistent between the two. So let's take a ride again. Okay, so here we are at a Blink Charger, which is actually right across the street from the uh, Tesla Supercharger in York, Pennsylvania. Um, Amazingly, this looks like it's actually operating today. We tried this once before with this charger and it was dead, but it looks like it's alive now. So we're going to see what's going on. First, we uh, take out our card, tap the card. Okay, it's authorizing payment. And we're going to plug this together. And we'll hit the button on top. There we go, green light. And let's plug it in. Notice the green light starts flashing. It means the cars are communicating. Uh, on the display, it says that it's initiating. Sounds like it's winding up. And we've got a green flash light on here. So, this is showing we have active power of 42 kW there. Let's see what's going on in the car. So, we're charging, and even with a 70% battery, um, we're at 35 kW. Um, which is pretty darn cool, actually. Um, so I'm gonna set my limit up. There we go. So we're getting 36 kW um, out of this out of this DC fast charger with a 70% battery. I think that's pretty good, considering they said uh, roughly what 45 kW was available. So we're gonna run this just for a couple of minutes. Um, and then what we'll do is we're going to change over to the Catamo charger 
and see if we get the same rate of charge out of here. Okay, so uh, we ran the CCS adapter just for a minute or two, um, two minutes to be exact. Uh, took 1.6 kW from them, um, and it maxed out around 38 kW um, on the charge rate. So now what we're gonna do out of the same station, we're gonna try it with the Catamo charger and see if there's any difference. Okay, so we've tried twice now with the Catamo. It's failed both times. We're gonna try one more time. making some noise. This is promising. All right, now we've got it started. Now looking to see what available power, the same as before, showing that there's uh, 42 kW of available power there. It is charging. And this has typically been my experience with Chatamo chargers. I mean, I, I don't think I've ever been able to plug it in and get it working the first time. It's always in and out two different times. And then finally it, it gets going. So it's delivering, it says active power available. It's uh, 42 kW. Let's go see what the cars get. If we take a look at this, uh, we're actually getting 44 kW out of the Catamo charger which is impressive, especially at 72% at, uh, charge on my battery. Um, it's also a little strange considering that the charging station says that there's only 42 kW available from the station. But uh, according to this, we're getting 44 kW from this. Now, when I did test the uh, CCS1 before, one of the things that we found was that after about 10 minutes at a lower kW rate, after about 10 minutes, it picked up and maxed out its charge. Um, we did not give it 10 minutes here, um, but we may do that just to see if, uh, if we can get that out of there. So right now I'm gonna switch back to the CCS1 adapter, let it run for about 10 minutes, and we'll see if the charge rate uh, is comparable at that point. Okay, folks, so what we did here was we reconnected uh, the CCS1 adapter. I haven't even given it 10 minutes, actually. It's been literally connected for a minute. Um, and as you can see, it's now putting out 44 kW. So um, it would appear that when we first connected, it was at 37, which was about 7 kW less than uh, the, the charging station indicated it was putting out. That was the same experience we had before with the CCS, but after about 10 minutes, um, it picked up to the full rate. It looks like what's going on here is, um, as we're charging the battery, maybe we're warming it up a little bit here. Um, but so as we're charging the battery, um, when I first put it in, it was a 37 kW. We pulled it out after two minutes, tried the Catamo. The Catamo came in at 44 kW, pulled the Catamo and put the CCS1 back on, which is on right now, and we're getting the same 44 kW out of it. So from what I can tell, there really is no uh, degradation or you know, in the charge rate between the Catamo and the CCS1 adapter off the station. And it's good that we're doing this on the same station because we're comparing apples to apples here. Um, and quite frankly, uh, given the fact that my battery's at 75%, I'm pretty impressed with getting up to 44 kW off this uh, station. Um, so that being said, once again, I, you know, I don't see any difference uh, uh, or any drawback between using the CCS1 versus the Catamo. And uh, given the uh, fact that the CCS1 proliferation is going to be much greater over the next coming years, uh, I, I, th I think you're going to see a lot more of these than you're going to see Catamo chargers around. It makes a lot more sense, especially at the same price, um, to go with the CCS1 adapter. So I hope that was uh, helpful to you. Uh, it's a follow-up uh, to the last video. And uh, if you have any questions, you know, throw them in the comments, uh, any other things you'd like to take a look at. Um, I know we've had some uh, requests to uh, 
check it out at the Electrify America charging station, and uh, we're planning on doing that probably sometime over the next week. So once again, thanks again for watching, and uh, I'll see you soon. Stay safe. Okay, so um, we finished uh, this last uh, overview on the CCS1 versus the Catamo adapter. Um, and after I finished the video, there was one thing I, I thought I should mention in here. Um, and maybe you can call it that I cheated a little bit. Um, what I did was uh, the uh, Blink charging station that I went to is actually right next to the supercharger in York. And uh, I will say what I did was I set the supercharger um, as my destination. So my car was preconditioning um, for supercharging when I was on my way to that uh, Blink charger. Um, I knew my battery level was fairly high and I was actually using that to, uh, to try to lower the battery level before I got to the charger. But for full disclosure, I thought it was probably pretty important that I uh, point that out. So I wanted to do that. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope uh, you found it uh, informative. And uh, best I can say is take care and stay safe.